Hey, what's up Blender users? I'm Jonathan and in today's video I'm going to show you three different ways on how to create wallpapers. And if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday. And with that said, let's get straight into the tutorial. So we are going to start with this wallpaper and all of them are actually pretty easy to create but this is probably the hardest one. So we will first have to create a plane with hexagonal faces. The easiest way I found to do this is to add in a cylinder and put in six as the vertices just like this and now we can select the top face press ctrl and i to invert the selection x and delete all the other faces now we can tap out of edit mode go to object set origin and origin to geometry and press alt and g just like this so now we have to array this face to a plane shape to do this we can just add in an array modifier just like this and i use the count of 25 now we need another array modifier, but first let's make sure that we check merge. This will merge the vertices together. So add in another array modifier and this time we will move it 0.02 on the x-axis and 0.75 on the y-axis. So we get a shape like this. If we now up the count you can see that this happens, which is not what we want. We want now to array this object along the y-axis. To do this we can just add in another array modifier and zero out the x location and now we can play with the y location till we get the correct amount. For me this is 0.857 and let's make sure to check merge every time. Okay great, now we can also adjust the count till we get a shape we like, just like this. And now we want to apply every array modifier. And we can see that we now have a mesh with hexagonal faces. Okay, great, now let's add in a camera and zero out location and rotation. And now we can move it upwards, press zero and move it into place, just like this. Okay, for the final shape of this wallpaper, we want to extrude the faces, which you can either do by hand or use the script I provided you in the video description. For this, just go to the scripting tab, press new and copy and paste this small script in here. We now want to be in edit mode and have nothing selected and now just press run script. This will then extrude all your faces upwards randomly and you can see that we get the shape. For the lighting I want to be in cycles, GPU and I will just use an environment texture. Now we can add a simple material. This time I will leave this wallpaper white so I'm gonna make it the widest color possible just like this and for a small little touch I really like. Um, we can add in a bevel modifier and you can see if I connect this normal output to the normal input we get a nice bevel on the edge. And yeah, this is the process behind creating the first wallpaper. Let's now create the second one. For this we can just stay in the scene and delete this plane. We're gonna add in another one, just like this. Zero out of the camera's location and now scale this one up. This will be our ground, so we can move it down. Duplicate it. Alt-G and add in a array modifier. We will array this one down. To array this plane down we have to uncheck relative offset and check constant offset and now we can add in a negative Z location just like this. And I'm gonna use a count of 5. And now also move this plane up. If we go into wireframe mode all the planes have to be outside the camera view. We will achieve this paper cut effect by using a material. So add in a new material and add in a mix shader as well as a transparent shader. We will also need a 3D noise texture just like this. If we just preview this noise texture in cycles, we can see that this is 3D and the noise will vary on every plane. So we can use this as our factor. So plug this into the factor of the mix shader, plug the transparent shader on the bottom socket and the principal BSDF in the top socket. And now with the node wrangler add-on enabled, we can control shift click on the node. To better preview this, we can check transparent under the film option. Of course, this now doesn't do much because this noise texture needs some contrast. So we can just add in a color ramp node and play with the sliders until we found something we like. Also, this noise texture is way too small for me, so I'm gonna turn the size down to for example 2, just like this. And we can also play with the detail and I'm gonna go with a detail of zero. Now if we use this color output as our factor, we can really start to see the paper cutting effect. You will have to play, you can change the noise texture to 4D and play with the seed, 
till you find something you like. You can see that the edges right now look a bit soft and this is due to the linear interpolation mode. So we can change this to constant and now the edges are sharp. Okay, the third wallpaper is probably the easiest one. We can just add in a plane, go over to cycles and select experimental and also GPU for me. Because for this wallpaper we will use adaptive subdivisions. So add in a subdivision surface modifier Go over to simple and click adaptive. We can now add in a new material and right now we can go over to displacement and choose displacement only. This will help us later. So open a new window, go to the shader editor and now we can just import any image texture you want. But I'm gonna use a fingerprints texture from CG bookcase. So I'm just gonna go with this one and we can preview this. This looks pretty good. So now let's add in a displacement node and plug the color output into the height input. You can now plug the displacement output into the displacement socket of the material output node. Okay, great. Now we get this. This is not really what we want, because we want displacement, but we can only get true displacement in cycles. So let's switch over to the renderer. To better see our result, add in an environment texture. Okay, the displacement is way too harsh. So let's give it a scale of 0.1, like this. Right now we can't really see anything because the subdivisions are way too low. So let's go over to the scene tab and under subdivisions we can turn the preview down to 1. This will now load a while but we can really start to see our displacement taking place. If you want your displacement to be a bit more interesting you can duplicate your image texture and select another texture and then go with a mix RGB node and mix these two together. You can do this with as many nodes as you want. And this will, with every step, add some variation to your displacement. And yeah, these are the three techniques I used to create these wallpapers. I hope you learned something and you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you did, consider liking and subscribing. And we will see us in the next video.